Vivzy Pop, the creator, Vivian, she's kind of a lot of she has a lot of haters. Um, she's been building up this fan base for Hel- uh, for Hasbun Hotel for like the last ten years, I think. When she originally designed Is it that the characters, old? yes, she designed the characters a long time ago, like with people. Because the show ju- just came out like uh, two months yeah. ago, I think. Yeah, 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 the show just came out, but the characters, it's been a community effort for the last like ten years to create this show. That's insane. Like for the characters and designs and everything. Um, and the, would you say like, some of like the the demographic for this original show w- would be like some of the um uh, I don't want to sound like mean, but sort of like people who maybe used to be on Tumblr. <laughs> Right, it has apt, a bit of that. A very Does apt. It, do you see astute, what I'm saying? A, a very apt way to sum it up, and a very astute observation there, Nitai. Because I 100 percent agree with you here. Thank you. Um, I feel like a crazy person thinking about like, it. it it's the it. opposite of a fedora tipping atheist on Reddit. <laughs> no, it's the Tumblr version. It's people like him, yeah. or oh, he's on this side now. It's people like him, that guy right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know. Look at that idiot. Anyway, um, so Viv- Vivian's uh, drama, personal drama aside with people like hating her for whatever reason, she she's done a lot of weird things and she doesn't back down or say sorry and stuff like that. But her aside, um, there was the huge drama of the people when A24 picked it up, uh, as people feared, they decided or it is assumed that A24 was like, hey, we want a professional um, voice actor cast. And no one really knows what happened. No one can talk about it because NDAs. And the only reason I think that A24 did that is because, as far as I know, uh, one person who was on the old pilot did speak out and said, you know, I'm very sad that I don't get to work with this, this thing that we created. Because, again, all the people who worked on the pilot are people who have been voice acting for a while. They're well-known online. But they're not as popular as, like, Keith David, that's for sure, or Stephanie Beatrice. It's still like, crazy that Keith David is in this fucking weird show. Yeah, I know. but It's so, so weird. <laughs> people were upset that um, the studio didn't fight to keep the old voice actors. But again, I get it. You know, when, when you get bought, when you're being produced by a studio, they kind of get the final calls. It's their money. You can't do anything about that, okay? It's their call. Uh, so I, I pieced it together. Main based issue is that we don't know enough about what happened, I guess. Yeah, well. we don't know what happened. So this is yeah. all just speculation. Um, this is what I think happened because the guy that voiced one of the characters did say like, uh, I wish I, I, I would rather work with a company that would fight for my talent, which leads me to believe that they probably were suggested by a 24. Hey, we're going to get this new talent. So sucks. Um, I will say. The people that A24 hired, or the new voice cast for uh, Hasman Hotel, phenomenal. I I want to start off by talking about Hasman Hotel, what I liked about it, right? Okay. Um, I like the music aspect. I like the singing. Um, kind of weird that there, it felt like there was two two new songs every episode. And I'm just like, this because is a lot of were, budget. Yeah. That they're just singing for no reason. Some are like, super short as well. Like two minutes yeah, max. Something like that. I I liked most of the songs. I I had no complaints with the singing. So I'm like I'm glad that they got Broadway trained uh, voice actors to be here, because amazing. You know, uh, I I completely forgot that Keith David could sing because I completely forgot he was in The Princess and the Frog. He was great in The Princess and the Frog. Yeah, he I was got the, friends the, the on man. the other side. Yeah, but I, I that's completely the thing. It, it's, you, you you just said get Keith David singing in that movie and in this show, and I'm like. Obviously, it's a very different style of songwriting, and the music is different, and I get that. And first mm-hmm. of all, no disrespect to anyone who was working on this show. Like, I'm not trying to, like, there's a lot of effort being put on this play. You can tell, like, the people working on, on it <clears throat> really care. At, at least it feels like that way, because it's a very specific, weird kind of vision. And I'm, I do think it's cool that it exists, but there's something about this songwriting that I just can't get into uh, we talked about it but there are only two songs that i liked in this first right. season because most of the singing is like it's like a character being like i'm talking this dying in this dialogue and, da, 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 da. and then you talk about your dialogue it's like i know like what broadway is but in here it feels so like i don't yeah. know if artificial is the word but it's something's off for me so Again, I want to talk about the accolades that I'm going to give to the show first before I completely mm. rip it apart. Uh, because I, 
I am of the opinion that it wasn't terrible. I also don't think it was as good as I wanted it, but at the same time, that more of comes with the writing of the show, and I think that it just needed more time. If it had twelve episodes instead of eight, I think it could have it could easily rectify it's my a, problems. A quick with the watch, show. yeah. It's um, a very quick watch. So, I think that the you know outside of the music talent, I also think the the storyline that they did with uh, Angel Dust phenomenal. I loved Angel Dust's story. That's I wish I wanted to see this, more of that. Season. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, outside of the weird angel dust and husk husker like shipping that the, the I, I the don't like that sh- that shipping I, I know I also don't like that ship I'm like they can't just and, be but good for buddies. some reason like, <laughs> we, bro, dude like I was having a conversation with my girlfriend about it and I was like yeah like I like the songs for that episode but I don't think it's a good shipping it's like no but it's okay and I'm like bro fucking invaded his private like space like mm-hmm. for four episodes, and now you're telling me they're about to fuck. Like, no, oh no, don't. And see, that's like the it. thing. Like, <laughs> the beauty of it to me about uh, Husker and Angel Dust's relationship at that point is that Husker he, he sees like Angel Dust for what he really is a fake. Because, yeah. and then it's like, it, then we learn about the real reason why Angel Dust is actually like hurting on the inside. I'm just like, this is real dialogue, this is real character development. Yeah. I love shit like this. It's raw. It feels really yeah. Like, it's like it's you know this man emotional. has never had this angel dust has never had someone be an actual friend to him and actually cared like to the extent that Husk is showing him care right now, yeah. which is like you know rip off your bullshit and be yourself, and then it's like what if I'm too broken to be myself? What if no one loves me if I'm I'm from myself? And he's like who fucking cares? Everyone's broken a little bit, and I'm just like I resonate with this. This is yeah. a great freaking message. Fucking um, poison is like the best song in this season as well. It's like that that song is like whoa. Again, the We're Loser okay. song was pretty good, too, with Keith David. I really yeah. liked it. Again, best episode of the season has the best two songs from the entire season as well. And then It's Gonna Be a Good Day in Hell was a good song, too. I love that. Um, I I really was disappointed with the rest of the story. Like, outside of the Angel Dust and Husker stuff, I was disappointed with the rest, unfortunately. Because it's like, I, I remember you said... Uh, you you were like Charlie is kind of just a whatever character. She's like boring, and I'm just like, she, oh I, no, she, she's that, my least favorite character. Yeah. She's your I least really favorite character, like and I'm like, that kind of sucks because I think you know Charlie is kind of the main character of the yeah. series because she's the the one who started this whole entire thing, and we kind of follow her. But I also was like, she's so one dimensional of, of a character. Like I I wanted to love more yeah. than just the music and the angel dust stuff. From the show, I I really did. It's like, I wanted. They to even watch, joke about like, it. Lovely. How it's like, oh, it's She's like a naive like, princess. Yeah, it's like, oh, and she has daddy issues. It's like, oh, but that's really all she has. And then they resolve the daddy issues. It's like, what character do you have? It's like, uh... yeah, it's like she's, it's. It's a weird vibe because from the outset, how we're introduced to the story, uh, I will say episode zero does set up a little bit more of the story. So you kind of have to watch the pilot. Like you don't know why like Alistair I'll go back is and there. watch the pilot just for like to, to, to get more. Just sense to understand it, but... like why is Alistair there? Because basically. But that's between... not a really a question that bothered me too much because I was, I was sort of yeah, like I, letting I the mean, show I personally, do thing, I, you know, I personally care about setup like that, but it does link to it from here's, you know, watch the pilot episode zero. And then it explains like why charlie is doing this entire thing anyway even though they kind of mm-hmm. they sum it up really well in episode one anyway but it's like okay but we don't learn we got to learn a little bit more and they do like pull the uh veil off a little bit so we can learn more about like, who alistair really is like with the whole mimsy thing and learning about alistair and you know the, cool design um, by the way i do like alistair's design yeah and um i thought it was weird that they how they did the sound mixing for alistair because He's supposed to be. Right? He's supposed to have that filter on all the time, and sometimes because they he's drop the radio it. Radio demon. Yeah, I, I was like, I don't know why they drop it at times. They should have just kept it on the entire time. Like, it would be fine if they dropped it to make a point of like he's saying something to make a point, but they drop yeah. it at awkward times where he's not making a point. He's just saying something. He's just talking, and it's like it's kind of weird. It's a weird sound something, mixing choice. Something else that like really like the more I thought about it, like it felt like there were some cracks in, in the writing is sometimes like, so they set up these plot points. They're like, Oh, so this is like a major thing that that's crazy. But when you think about it, it's like, how come in this story that supposedly like, you know, this place has a history of thousands of years, only at this point of time does this shit happen. Like they have this whole thing about, Oh, heaven is like 
it's like not all heaven knows about them exterminating hell it's like why does how come only now they find out that that's what they're doing it's like it's there's some cool ideas there and i do like the sort of set up like the world that they're trying to sell and, and i like that the world has uh openings for more stuff and side stories to be like you can tell like there's a whole world out there that can be taken like you can tell stories with but it's like right. it feels so ha- events happen now just because they they could have happened way before it's like it, there's a big a big deal about them killing an angel but it's like so you're telling me no one in history ever tried to kill an angel it's like well, no, they tried, but know. they didn't understand why they were able. They didn't understand how they could be able to do it. Yeah, it's I, it just there's a lot of questions so that have been raised. Yeah, yeah, but but you have all these powerful beings there, like all the overlords. Like no one ever tried, like try to crack at like killing an angel. There's a reason, for all, it. Not, which is, is they, because yeah, the reason is that they don't want to fuck with the status. They like being lords in hell, bro. Who cares? Who cares about rebelling against the the angels when but I can literally live in hell an with overlord? The other but but that's the thing. Literally, an overlord kills an angel because uh, I don't remember her name. She had oh, I hate the um, song that she has Car- later in the season. Camilla, Carmilla, Camilla. Was. Oh, yeah, the fucking flamenco song she has later in the. Se- I I don't like that song at all. So, yeah, that that song was not the best. Okay. Thank you. I feel so validated. <laughs> uh, I hate this this fucking soundtrack is being played all the time here. Um, <laughs> it's fine, <laughs> but, but it's like. So she kills an angel to protect her family, or whatever. That never happened in the thousands of years they've been. Uh, these kind of questions like come up when you think about it too much. It's like, I, I don't know. Mm. It's weird. Well, so the works. thing is that so for the the exterminators, right? The um, exorcists, the angels that come down to Adam. exercise, right? For all of them. They are supposed to attack basically non-discriminately, but they have a thing where it's like, okay, there are certain people we won't touch, which is basically the the people who are ruling hell, right? You have the 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 actual um, lords of hell, right? Family. There's like like the royal families, right? Um, if you watch Hell of a Boss, you'll understand. Like, there's the Goetia as well. There's so we just the... watched that of the uh, Goetia. Well, pretty cool. And like the writing is, is really weak in in the Hasbin Hotel out like compared to Hell of a Boss because I feel like every character outside of Angel Dust uh didn't get enough development like we don't understand anything about anyone ever a lot of them are very one dimensional outside of Husk really is definitely the most developed character yeah yeah and it's like that's like my biggest issue with the writing in Hasbin Hotel. That Vaggy is so one-sided dimensional, like, oh, I'm an ex-soldier, I'm moody and broody, and I've been lying to you this entire time. And then there's I don't know Charlie, why she, her who's, who's I'm a super, so flat, super you know? happy-go-lucky hell princess who sometimes rages, and then she's so, I'm so sorry, and I'm just like, they're so one-dimensional, you know? And, like, obviously we're not supposed to know anything about Alistair, uh... I will give props to the sound effect design for whoever the, um... That spider dude was. I don't actually remember his name anymore. Who? One of the overlords, the spider guy, the green spider guy. Oh, that one. I did like that character. I I liked his sound effect for the name, or for mm-hmm. uh for when he talked because it's the basically it's the Protoss sound effect from Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, could he please say my life for ire? <laughs> Can you please tell me not you must construct additional pylons? I need to hear these words. I haven't heard these I words was wondering, in so long. I was wondering what you thought of the tone because I talked about it last time how it kind of had a like a whiplash effect with it because that angel does step so oh, that, like the perfect example. Yeah, so there's a lot of tonal whiplash because it's like all right, so we have like we set up from episode one. Here is the idea, here's the premise of the show. Yeah. And then we see that she does absolutely nothing to really kickstart her plan. We kind of just follow the the failings of Charlie, and we watch the character yeah. slightly grow. And the only one who really experiences like character depth and growth is Angel, Angel. Dust. Yeah. And then the rest kind of just like fall into line. And then it doesn't make sense of like, like it makes sense, but it also doesn't make sense like the end when it's like okay after the whole fighting in the war and um, Adam gets his ass kicked by Lucifer. 
why does um Pentius, Sir Pentius, whatever the snake dude, yeah, why is He's he now, now in heaven. heaven? Yeah, and then it's because like because he changed. It leaves... Yeah, and it's like even... It, and even the angels don't know what happened. And I'm just like, you know, there was a way better show that talks about heaven and hell and the um absurdity of heaven and their rules. Talking about the good place. I'm talking about the good place. <laughs> Fucking awesome show. Way good better place. show that's about Great that. Show. <laughs> that if you want to watch a funny show that has way better characters and character development, go watch the good place. It's kind of Super it tackles the exact same philosophical theme. as well. Yeah, it's it's a great show. It's a fantastic show. But All the way yeah, through. To me, I, I feel like the reason I like Hell of a, a Boss a lot more than I like Hasman Hotel because Hell of a Boss at least has more interesting characters and there's more depth. Like, at least... Now, I wouldn't say for uh, Millie or Moxie because they, they're kind of just whatever, but, like, the whole Luna thing with... um, Oh, my God. What's his name? The big imp dude who fucks the Goetia uh, guy. Bo Blitz. Bo's Blitz. The... Blitz. Yeah. Blitz, like, Blitz without a no. The character... Yeah, Blitz, there's the O is so silent, stupid. bitch. So stupid. And in, in Hell of a Boss, it makes more sense why they curse and swear all the time in Hell of a Boss because they're all imps and demons and stuff. Like, hell, they're lower hell spawn. It doesn't make sense, and it feels so out of place in Hasman Hotel. Thank it's you. Like, That's what I was talking about. I knew I wasn't crazy for thinking that. Yeah, so I thought when you told me that you had a problem with that, I was just like, well, in Hell of a Boss, they curse a lot, but that makes sense because they're they're kind of the rough workers, you know, they, they kind of do dirty contracts and they're assassins. I'm like, I, that's how I expect these type of people to speak. But yeah. for people uh, in Hasman Hotel, it's like all of them do it all the all goddamn time. Yeah, it's like they just un they swear unnecessarily. Like, I thought it would have been like really cool. I thought it would have been really cool if Charlie never swore because, you know, she's supposed to be a Disney princess, you know, of, mm -hmm. even though she's a princess of hell, she's still a princess. So I thought it'd be cool if they made it so she never swore at all. That would have been a lot more interesting. Yeah. Um, it's like it, the, the swearing is like a, it's like a, a crutch for the writing. It's like they need to fill space or like airspace. They have to be like, you talk about something and then fucking bitch, son of a bitch, con. It's like, does it really add something? And again, I'm not against swearing. It's just so everywhere you know yeah, it's kind of just used to make like a to emphasize like this part should be funny you should be laugh because haha profanity it's it's very yeah. lowbrow right yeah yeah and again so I, i'm I, all for it. it just feels so out of place you know because yeah, every it's, character it's, to me it it's lowbrow entertainment everything. and yeah i again i wanted to like hasman hotel because i really like the pilot um I hate that it basically ends at episode eight and it's like, well, just wait for next season. And I believe it, it already got greenly for a season two. So we'll, we'll have a season two. There's eventually. potential for it to be way more interesting the next season, but eh, it's fine. I, it, it's just fine. You know, I totally get that. It's not a show for me. That was my main takeaway. Cause so like I saw it with my girlfriend, how she was like, she got really, she really connected to it and she really like and a lot of people did which is really fucking cool because again especially with the angel dust episode that's like an episode that deals with a lot of heavy stuff and right. well i personally didn't really connect with it that much i could appreciate it for what it was i can you totally could still see. feel even though yeah. you couldn't personally connect with I it could you still, could still feel, feel it. empathetic towards it because it's yeah like, empathetic this is really fucked up. yeah you know it's a, it's a situation that we even if you've never experienced you don't you can understand you can the gravity of it. it. Yeah, yeah, it's like I, you know, I the the fact that him and um Val Valentino Val, yeah, Valentino, the Angel Dust yeah. and Val had like this toxic relationship, right? It was like it's the perfect uh, descriptor of a, a toxic relationship where it's like constantly being love bombed by this person after they fucking beat you up and you know they hit you and they fucking choke you out, yeah, and they just they keep doing things to hurt you for fun, but then they're so apologetic afterwards and like the you know he's basically like i own you bitch i own your soul and it's like nothing you do it's like that's it resonated with me like that type of story i'm just like yeah that's yeah. really fucked up um I that wish whole they story did that. that whole section was like wow that was like really yeah. powerful and that's why a lot of fans connected with angel dust and i saw on on youtube a cosplay couple that was saying basically um hey we love all you fans of hasman hotel but if you're under 18, please do not send us your cosplays, especially if you're cosplaying someone like Angel Dust. Because oh apparently there's kids under the age of 18 cosplaying Angel Dust and, like, mimicking 
and Angel Dust is a porn star in this universe, and they're like mimicking his mannerisms. I wouldn't and stuff, and know I'm if like, he's a great role model for kids. <laughs> I, I think you know, kids are they take on what they watch, right? They download new personalities. We've discussed this before, so yeah. it's kind of hard to stop kids from doing that. Uh, also, weird that Amazon was like, "Yeah, it's rated 16 plus," and I'm like, "Shouldn't this be 18 plus?" <laughs> That's like, why, why is it 16 plus? 16 plus, plus like, on Amazon hell? Prime? That's kind of. Uh... I know. I was like, "That's." kind of a Sucks. weird rating since it's there's like blood and guts and li quite literally like orgy gangbang sex like in one of the episodes all over the place like it's not explicit but it's he's shooting porn yeah that like, episode there's he's no other way porn. around it yeah yeah it's so weird. i'm just like it's it's weird that it wasn't 18 plus but uh i digress but um yeah i i wish the character writing really was a lot stronger two? in the show i'm probably gonna watch season two but now that I've seen season one and I tried to temper my expectations and I'm glad I did. I, I was right. It didn't live up to what I wanted it to be. But again, I, I feel like that's the, the short episode count to blame. I feel like there's more of a story that could have been written. Uh, I don't know if it's the short episode count. I think it's like for me personally, just like the, 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 um, the, um, hmm, I want to like the style of writing is just something that like, I can't get over too much you know maybe just like the that, that's like the foundation of the show because again yeah, like I mean, most of the music i didn't enjoy that much as well the entire point is that you know they're demons and they're angels but it's you know they're, but they have a place in heaven too they, they can be reformed yeah. yeah but it's like okay but they're demons and they're sinners so they got to be they, they're supposed to be rough they're supposed to be always cursing and this and that and it's like oh yeah i get it but like to to just I don't like the fact that the dialogue just includes it all the time, just for seemingly no reason. Like they didn't have yeah. to curse here, but they did. It's all the time. Yeah, but I'm glad we, I'm like... glad we had this this small chat because I feel so validated after the last time where we're like <laughs> I spoke my chat. mind. I'm like maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong, and I know we bore I mean, Alex to turn out of their minds. <laughs> I, I mean, you can. I don't you care. Can... You can tell Chinoda he can come back. We're done talking about. Yeah, um, can. Chinoda can come back. No I, I'll have to get his attention in the in this. He, I think he's reading chat. So. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Oh, wait, yeah, we yeah, get to, yeah. There you go. There that you works. go. Yeah, he's watching the camera. It's fine. Yeah. So for me personally, I'll probably watch season two, but I've tempered my expectations, and I I just yeah I. I just feel validated <laughs> now. I don't think you should feel bad. For not liking a show that a lot of people like, because I I personally don't care what people think that much, like whether they like it or not. <laughs> oh, that is right. such bullshit! I fucking <laughs> temper my expectations based on what other people say. Come on, no, I temper other my people like it, therefore I must hate it. Come on, yeah. Ah, and I, if I, and and if other people what like it, talking about if the other people like it and I think it's trash, then I am proud of that opinion. And... You just said you you went into free run hoping to hate it. What are you talking about? What do you mean? I didn't say that's that. That's the contrarian that's a... in him. I didn't say that at all. That is a misquote, sir. You have okay. said that. You have said that. You have said, said that before. No, find it. The Show me the receipts. Where's the receipt? Where are the receipts? I said, I, I went into free run thinking it can't be that good. I, I'm never looking for things to shit on. In fact, I said... I couldn't find anything shit on, which is odd because I usually find some stuff to shit on in any show I watch. Because regardless of whether or not I like a show or whether I think the show is good, it doesn't matter if it's good or bad. I will find faults with it because that's just how I am. I analyze the show. I can separate my enjoyment with like the quality of a show that I have a standard <laughs> for. It's fair enough. Fair enough. So but you uh, expected, that, you expected it not that. to be as good as people said it was. Yeah, because do you know how many times people blow like the like all the if I were to go into watching Hasbun Hotel based off of what my wife thought of the show, I would be <laughs> shitting on the show so much harder. <laughs> <laughs> if I knew nothing about Hasbun Hotel from the get go, like Natai went in blind and I went to watch it based off of what like uh my wife said, I would be shitting on her opinion so hard. <laughs> That's like why. But as someone who has you. prior knowledge, right, I think that you're you're validated in feeling that way because I, I don't think it was that great. But I, I see there's good parts of it, and I, I hope that they continue to craft it and make it better with more it's time. Um, I also understand that with, like, the new cast, like, they may be professionals, but 
the the previous cast members had so much longer to work on it to get into the characters and have a lot mm. more passion for it like obviously you know professionals are professionals they can perform their roles well but it's like do they really absolutely love their role like the previous voice actors did you, you will we'll never know i will say i'm glad we got a chance to talk because i'm gonna bounce out because it's 1 a.m they do need okay. to go to bed but it was a really right. fun talk and I feel super validated now. <laughs> That's Natai. all I need in the world. I don't. I honestly don't understand why, Natai, that you need me to validate your opinions. Like, oh, no, as no, long as just, John agrees with me, as long no, no, as John no, no. has it, the same it, opinion. It, I've I've been hearing a different opinion than than like than what I thought. And I felt I felt maybe it's like I'm seeing this show from a really different perspective and just not clicking. So hearing right. someone else say the same things I said, like, okay, maybe it's not so far fetched. I don't click with this show at all, you know. Yeah, and I, I agree with you. I think that it's very popular with the Tumblr kids. <laughs> I, I knew it. I fucking knew it. That's I what know. I got away from this entire like conversation. Listening to it, it's like this is a show for Tumblr kids. It and really listen, is. if you're it if really you're is, that, dude. you will love this show. You will Just love like how Rick show. and Morty is for Reddit mods, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it's so true. It's so it true. true. So accurate. Anyway, anyway, I go. I hope you guys you have a nice rest of the stream. Wait, I'm the time before sleep. you leave. Before you leave, what? the fuck happened to your hair? You look like a raging queer. Oh Whoa. my god! What the? Wow. Fuck? I love it. Don't get me wrong. But what queer. happened? What the action? Natai is knuff, bro. He is knuff. He is knuff. <laughs> <He is> knuff. 